Welcome. A little while ago, I talked about how I use focus modes uh, to make my iPad a focus device. Today, we're going to talk about the apps I use on my iPad, how I use them, and just what they're for, so you can know how I use it. Before we do that, a few ways you can support the channel. Number one is to become a member, YouTube member below, hit the join button, or do super thanks if you really like this video. Uh, or you can, you know, like, subscribe, all that other stuff. You can go to Skillshare, take one of my courses, links to all those are below as well. Let's buckle up and look at the apps I use on my iPad. Like many people, this last year has been a bit of a note-taking journey for me. Um, I've been on Bear, actually way, way back, started on Bear. I used Evernote many years ago. Um, I used Obsidian, I used Craft, then I went back to Obsidian. Now, I am firmly back on Obsidian. I don't really see myself changing, despite extra cool features like Craft 1.7 adding tables. There's a link to that video above that I did. Um, Obsidian is where I put all of my personal notes. I have another video on what I call the tag note system and how I separate notes and tags. So uh, thoughts out of books and then kind of things that I think will develop into bigger topics like say smoking, stuff like that. So I'll link to that video, but that's really where I keep my thoughts is in Obsidian. Summaries of articles, my thoughts on it uh, is in Obsidian. Now, for collecting those articles, my Read It Later service is Dev and Think. Dev and Think to go on iPad, but Dev and Think. Um, yes, Dev and Think to go has languished for a bit, but it is certainly getting far, far better, and they are continuing to push it. Uh, and I think if you do have a Mac around, which I do, that can run the Dev and Think application that does some of the more advanced processing, then Dev and Think is just the best. I read It Later, I use it for file storage as well. All my receipts end up in there. Um, I think it's just the best service for that. For RSS, I use Unread. Unread is just by far my favorite RSS clients. I've looked at a bunch many times, and Unread is by, by far the best. There's nothing else that even comes close to it in my eyes. My other big content consumption platform is YouTube, funny enough. So I watch lots of videos on YouTube. I Honestly, my secret pleasure is StarCraft videos. Pretty much every lunch, I watch Loco and watch StarCraft videos. I don't even play it. My M1 MacBook Air plays it terribly, um, but I just enjoy it. And I wish I might get a PC just to be able to play StarCraft. So I watch lots of YouTube videos. I watch YouTube videos in my research. I watch YouTube videos just for pleasure. YouTube is the other big consumption app that I use. Next up, the other big thing that I do on my iPad is video production. So I actually record into my M1 MacBook Air because Ecamm gives me some cool features like I can even just bring up my desktop. You can see my notes for a second. I can do this automatically without needing to edit later. So I definitely like that. Um, I used to be able to bring my iPad in, but there's some power issue where every once in a while it buzzes and I can't do it. So I just have to record that screen and bring it in later now. But what I use to edit is LumaFusion. Uh, you should actually, I still use two apps, I suppose, LumaFusion and Bruce Free, I'd say. So LumaFusion is the main video editing app, and I used to actually have to export the audio into Bruce Free and then bring it back into LumaFusion once I have cut out the hiss, because I do have a bit of a hiss here. Um, and I take that out easily, and you never hear it because of Bruce Free. Now, LumaFusion recently added audio units, so Bruce Free is now a plug-in for LumaFusion. I don't necessarily need to open the app at all. I just apply the sound, uh, the audio unit to the video, and I'm good to go. After that, thumbnail building. So I use a few different applications for that. The main one is actually Canva. Um, I'll use Canva to design all my thumbnails now. I know many designers say, oh, Canva, really? But it helps me. It gives me a template to work with. And that just makes my job way easier. It makes everything I do so much better. Um, then I'll take photos. I'll take photos often actually with my uh, 13 mini now, um, formerly with my SE2. Uh, that gray background you've seen a lot of my videos, my phone, my photos, my photos. The B-roll I have is actually just my garage floor. Just my garage floor. So that's where I do all of my video or my photo processing is just uh, occasionally with Halide, although I find it a little finicky. So often just with the Apple camera app, and then I'll put it into Darkroom uh, to do some adjustments. Then I'll bring it into Canva and put it into a thumbnail. And I actually find Canva does a bad job of compressing photos. So I'll export it from Canva and then I'll into my photo roll and then I'll actually run it through Affinity Photo to do final compression. I occasionally have done some uh, photo video editing, or not photo, not video editing, photo editing in Affinity Photo, but I just, you know, I didn't come up with as cool of stuff as I think I get by starting on a template with Canva. The final two pieces I use sometimes is Filmic Remote and Filmic Pro. So if I'm using for uh, shooting video for B-roll with my 13 mini, then I use Filmic 
Pro. If I'm setting up a second angle for B-roll, I'll put Filmic Remote up on my iPad so I can just see it, um, see what I'm shooting, and then I'll use my phone to shoot the video still. So Filmic Remote is the other one that I use in there. Task management. I have two main areas. First off is a lot of my personal tasks, or all my personal tasks are managed in um, things. Uh, occasionally I will use reminders, uh, just if I'm like, hey, remind me about whatever in an hour, just to have that. Um, but I don't, that's not really my task manager. It's just easy to use verbally if I'm, say, running and say, hey, remind me about some book that I just heard about on a podcast, and it will do that. At Things 3 is my task manager of choice. I love their new big widget. It's excellent. Their Excel widget on iPad is amazing. And it just feels like the right amount of urgency with the, with the least amount of guilt. Lots of other apps are like guilting you. Have all these, it's bright red, this task that's overdue. This one's just like, yeah, it's still in your debut. It's not done yet. You should probably do it. So I like that. Uh, and the only other thing I use is Obsidian with a Kanban plugin to just sort. I find that content really does a good job. So my videos, any of my content that I write does a good job in a Kanban board. I have uh, ideas. Uh, I've talked about this before, but I have an ideas uh, column. I have stuff that I'm working on. I have stuff that, you know, needs to be recorded or scheduled. I have stuff that, you know, as it moves to publish that gets published and that syncs back and forth between my, uh, Mac, my iPad and my, uh, phone. But most of the writing, most of the management of that entire thing is done on my iPad by, f by far. I actually have an obsidian course as well. If you'd like to take that, there's a link up yeah, sorry, link in the description for that one. If you want to know how I do that, I do all my writing in there as well in Markdown. It's just, it's excellent obsidian is. Office tasks. For email, I use Spark. It's just the best. It's the least, least worst one. Integrates with Things 3. Uh, it's on cross-platform, so I can have keyboard shortcuts on everything. That's about it. Like, it's, it's just an email client. Email clients are email clients. I do as little email as possible. Uh, to manage my business expenses, I use numbers. That's, I just have a number spreadsheet. I've tracked things in for 10 years and my accountant likes it and I like it and we're good to go. Uh, and then I use Solver to do uh, US to Canadian conversions because I'm in Canada and I need to do all my income needs to be reported in Canadian. So I do that with Solver as things come in and it just makes it easy. I have formulas set up in there for how what percentage I'm gonna you know, pay myself out of my income, everything like that. Solver is excellent. On the social front, there's a few tools that I use. I've already talked about YouTube. I use that uh, as entertainment. Netflix, Disney Plus, uh, I actually really been enjoying Final Space on Netflix lately. That's really good. Uh, Disney Plus uh, Free Guy was really good as well recently. And I just, I actually only watched one episode on Apple TV Plus, whatever you call Apple, whatever the TV thing that Apple does is. I've watched the first foundation and haven't got back to it. Just not that it's bad, I just haven't got back to it. I don't watch a lot of TV actually. I'll read books or watch YouTube more than anything else. On the social front, there's really only two applications that I really dig into that I consider social. There's Tweetbot and Discord. Tweetbot, honestly, it's the filters in there. I've actually did a video about this as well. Why I think the Tweetbot subscription is absolutely worth it. I don't know how you all go to Twitter and see all the vileness that's on there. I have so many mute words for like a whole bunch of stupid stuff that I never want to hear about. I don't see any ads. Like it's, I, I don't know how people deal with Twitter otherwise. And then Discord is Discord. I mean, I don't ever, I don't think I've ever used the web on it. It's the Discord app, I find it loads way faster on my iPad than it ever does on my Mac. So I use Discord on my iPad all the time. Now, a few miscellaneous apps. I use one password for my passwords. I have a family account, so everybody uses it. Even my 10-year-old uses it. If you don't have a password management system, then remember that my 10-year-old can do it and you don't have anything. Um, I also have Authy with some of my two-factor codes right now. Uh, there is, Jason Snell has done this on six colors, and there'll be a link to that in the description about how to move your Authy uh, 2FA codes out to uh, one password. So I need to get to that, but I haven't done it yet. That's really it. And I use the stock apps like Messages as well. I have a, you know, a shared note uh, in notes with my wife, one for each child with just their like, you know, if somebody's sick, what their temperature at what time was. All right, we gave them this medication at what time, just so that we, you know, whoever goes to the doctor knows and so that we're both on the same page. So we didn't get to talk about it because kids are sick, then at least know I can look and be like, oh, they had last had Tylenol at what time? I can't give it to them again until. So it's just good to know. That's it. I say I use reminders once in a while. I use Safari. There's a bunch of standard apps that I didn't talk about. But that's what I use on my iPad. Those are the apps that I keep coming back to uh, that are just by far the best in class for iPad use. If you liked the video, thumbs up below. If you loved it, subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube will let you know something happened. Other than that, try to have a good day and behave yourself. Ciao.